Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to go over the Pox Walkers from the Dark Imperium box set. Though there are a few different ways you can get these guys into your army. They are some of the grossest models. <laughs> and uh, I really like, you know, the, the, the sheer breadth of weirdness and grossness about them that really makes them stand out, even in your Nurgle armies. Now, there are a bunch of different ways that you can get some very simple variation. So this fella here, for example, I've painted him with orange trousers. You can just as easily swap out any of the colors I'm about to use for what you think would look cool. And for a motley, ragtag kind of infected civilian populace, that can be a really easy way to do that. So maybe try this instead with what are some of the new colors? You might want to use a Garros Dunes on his trousers. You might want to swap. It's up to you. <laughs> what I'm going to show you can be very easily replicated. So without any further mucking around, all the paints we've used will be listed in the description. So let's get started. Now to start off with, I've hit this guy with a primer of Wraithbone, which is the contrast, I wouldn't say specific, but it is the contrast designed primer. Then what I've done is gone and given him a coat of Seraphim Sepia. Now I should have done that on camera, but I got a little bit excited, got carried away and just jump straight into it. I want to show you this stage all the same though, because this is where you can introduce a little bit of variation in tone for some of your plague bearers. You might decide you want a more uh, bruised, putrid kind of look. Give them a pre-shade of Reichlin Flesh Shade instead. Or if you want a darker, dirtier finish to them, maybe try Agrax Earth Shade. You can do quite a bit, and I like this with contrast specifically because you'll find that by getting that slightly deeper shading in the recesses, it can change up the color and the overall finish of your contrast stuff very easily. So bear that in mind, and I'd suggest grab one of those little boxes of easy to build plague bearers, spend an afternoon just having some fun, play around with some different shades, see what you like the look of. I'm just gonna show you how I'm you know, doing this fella, but I do recommend experimentation is the way forward. So what I'm gonna do now though, is go over the top of them with a dry brush. We're gonna use a white to kind of fake out. If you've ever seen Zenithal highlighting, where you have a darker color underneath and then you're spraying a lighter color from the top to simulate a lighting effect, we're doing something kind of similar with this. We have introduced a fair bit of shading with the shade that we've used. So again, Seraphim Sepia. What we wanna do now is to put some light back on the high points, which is gonna help the contrast paints that we use to get a much sharper finish. So what I've got here is some Rack White on my brush. Uh, you can use Prex City White as well if you want a slightly more crisp finish to this. But again, experimentation is gonna set you right. So let's do a quick brush on the edge of his base. It's a little difficult to see what we're gonna get this time, but it doesn't matter too much. Just starting from the top, drag your brush down. And all you're looking to do is pick up any edges, any sort of curved edges to the detail. So ugh, these yucky horns and stuff, you know, any exposed booboos or ugh, they're so gross. I love these guys. Uh, you can put on as much or as little of this as you like. Uh, you'll see it's a little difficult to see on camera, but the effect is a bit more pronounced when you've got it in front of you. So take your time and just as much of this as you think looks good. You, know, you can always stop if you think you've got enough. I'm just going to come back and we'll see what this looks like once I've got some more on. And I'm happy with what I've got the look of. Now, after a couple of passes with that rack white, what we've got is some nice white-ish highlights, but we've got all that shading in the recesses still. You can see I've been a little bit more selective. I have deliberately gone over his, his body a few times but his trousers and his weapon, I'm not really fussed about. We're gonna paint those with a slightly different technique. What I've got here, uh, this is one of the size two brushes from Redgrass Games. Looking around sort of a, a medium layer brush, if you're using Citadel stuff. I just like this one because it's got a slightly bigger, uh, what do you call it, the brush bit. <laughs> Goodness me. Uh, it's pretty cool, I like this one a lot and it keeps a really nice tip. So what I'm doing is just pulling out some Plague Bearer Flesh. This is a contrast paint. Just getting a look at how it's going to come off my brush by playing with it on my palette. And once you're confident with how that's going to look, all you need to do is go over all of his areas of gross and uh, uh, yucky skin. 
Just being careful anytime you come near to, say for example, these horns, you just need to steer away from those a little bit. Don't worry too much if you do end up hitting them with a little bit of this putrid green stuff. Oh, God, that's gross. <laughs> we'll come back though. <laughs> we'll give that about uh, 10, 20 minutes to dry. And once we're confident that's all ready, uh, we'll come back and have a look at what that looks like. Now that's not quite dry, and there's a few recesses that still have a little bit of uh, that stuff settling, but goodness me, ah, uh, ah, uh, isn't he the worst thing you've ever seen? I, <laughs> I love the Plague Bearers. What we're going to do now though is his trousers. Any gear that these guys are wearing is normally pretty ragtag, and you can do whatever you like with it. Uh, I normally recommend for your Plague Bearers, you want to put something on that's going to, I use the word contrast here, it's going to contrast their skin tone well. So we're going to add, on this case, orange. You might want to use something like even Steel Legion Drab if you want to do darker trousers. We just want it to look like, I guess, civilian worker sort of stuff, like a boiler suit that's been ripped and, and torn. And uh, uh, uh. Anyway, after having given my Griffhound Orange here a real good shake, we'll do the same thing again, just quickly check how this flows off my brush. Still using the same one. And we're going to go ahead and just start applying this all over those trousers. Now, when you come to any areas that have uh, like this rips and tears in this guy's trousers, so let's look at his front here, uh, where he's got these little areas, you can see bits of you know, maggoty flesh poking through, just go over them. Uh, we will touch some of those areas up later if we want to add any additional detail. But for the purposes of getting these fellas on the table, don't worry too much about those little areas standing out, all right? They'll look fine if they are the same color as the rest of his kit. Now we're going to go back up the model and we're going to get some skeleton horde. And we'll do it as horns and any little pokey outy bits with this. Now I've switched down to my medium layer brush because this is slightly smaller and I do want a little bit more control of this. What I'm going to do is instead of painting in the whole horn, I'll start about a third of the way down and just use that as a way to kind of fake out a vague fade effect. You can play around with the contrast medium as well if you want to sort of, uh, you know, make that look a little more, I want to say professional, <laughs> but it doesn't matter too much. If you're just pretending, essentially, that we've spent ages painting the fade on that horn. Now you can do that with all of them, or you can just bob in the whole horn with... Uh, skeleton bone, it doesn't matter too much. What we want to do is just make these little natural growths ugh, look a little bit more natural, like hardened, gross, yucky. Oh. I'm running out of words for gross, guys. Give me some synonyms in the comments. Now, one quick trick you can do with this is once you've splattered on your skeleton bone, on the things on his back here, what I've done is to very quickly just run my thumb over them while the contrast is still wet. You get a cool kind of blotchy transition effect. doesn't work on everything, but for something that's supposed to be natural like these, uh, well, as natural as a plague bearer can be, it works quite well. I've got now some Cassandora yellow, and this is a purely optional step. What I'm going to do is go around all of the little buboes and growths and what have you, and just add a little bit of yellow to change how they look. Uh, they will stand out just a little more on his skin. It won't be a huge difference, uh, but enough I think that it will add to the model, and it's not too difficult to do. As well, if you do end up, you know, putting, I say here, too much on, it doesn't really matter if there's ever too much, there's not a lot of hard edges on these guys. So as you can see, we just get some variation in his gross skin tone. Ugh. But remember as well that he has got feet too, so don't forget any of these details that you're doing up on top of his body. Just quickly bop in around his horrid little toesies as well. Now while that's drying, what I'm going to do is quickly mix up just one, bloop, two, bloop dollops of contrast medium. Now you could use water for this, but it will give you a slightly different finish. Don't worry too much about that though. All we're looking to do is really change the color of something a little. And then just a little bit of the lupus pink, which is super fun to say. I'm going to mix that in so we've got a nice thin pink goop 
And then, same as we've done for those horrible pimply bits, anywhere that's got that kind of rubbery uh, tentacle sort of feel to it, you can add just a little bit of this Volupus pink along recesses, along the tips of tentacles and what have you. And the same trick applies. Just brush it with your thumb if you want to get it off of any high points. And this contrast stuff will work quite well to fake out that fade effect. Now at the same time with that purple, it's also opportunities to do any of these little bits that you might have uh, covered over with his clothing. So gaps and cuts, anything like that. Just a little bit of purple will make them look a bit more bruised. Doesn't stand out massively, but enough for our purposes. What we're going to do now is any leather equipment. And this is entirely up to you. Snakebite Leather works very well for this. So does Saigor Brown, but I like Saigor Brown a little bit more. Uh, we've got this because it's going to be nice and dark. And I think a little bit more, again, contrast <laughs> in our color scheme so far is going to help us out. So there is not normally a huge amount of equipment on these guys. Doesn't take long just to paint this in. Now we're starting to get onto the home stretch. What I've got here is again my medium layer brush and we're going to put on some lead belcher. So just a little bit of water just in the tip of my brush so that we smooth this out, make it a little easier to apply. And then once you're satisfied with how that looks, just go all over his weapon. Uh, we don't need to worry too much about, you know, is the handle a different color? There's rusty springs and what have you. If you want to spend the time on these guys, you could paint on a couple of different metallic colors before we go to the next step. But for our purposes, this is going to be plenty. Now, while you have got your lead belcher out, you'll find on some of these guys that they've got little metallic plugs that are sit into their flesh, blubber, however you want to put it. This will be especially true if you're doing Galapox infected or some such. All you need to do is at the same time as you're doing his weapon, just a little bit of lead belcher on those as well. Uh, again, this is purely up to you if you want to do it or not. Um, you know, from table distance, you will not see them. Now, Rakarth Flesh is a great last minute color if you've got any ropes, cords, stuff like that, that you want to look a little bit lighter. Uh, you'll see here on these ropes, I've been a little more careful when painting around them. So, you know, I hadn't got them over the white stuff, but I do want them to be slightly darker, a bit more grim. So, Rakarth Flesh is a great one to have in your arsenal because it can be used for so many different things. Now, it's rope. Now, if you thought I was going to get through painting an entire miniature without breaking out the Agrax Earthshade, you don't know me very well yet, do you? <laughs> so I've got my Agrax Earthshade and still using my medium layer brush. We're just going to cover over all of the metal with a generous portion of this gunk. Now, I do suggest as well, if you're going to do the plugs, you know, those little metal plugs in a skin, um, be a bit more careful when you come time to do those. You seem to be fairly generous with this. I want it to look dirty and gross. Um, particular pay attention to these little plugs if you're doing those Galapox guys. And then while that's drying, we can go ahead and start putting on his base. Now I'm going to use my usual Armageddon dust recipe, and I'll include that in the description below. It's not terribly interesting, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. All we're going to do is a coat of this Armageddon dust. Once this is dry, hit it with some Seraph and Sepia. And then once that's dry, quick dry brush of Tyrant's Skull will do the job. And there we have it. With his base done, our Poxwalker is complete. I've gotten his name wrong a few times, <laughs> but don't listen to me. You know it says Poxwalker on the box. Now, we could leave him here. I've given him a quick varnish using Storm Shield, which is the, uh, the varnish in the pot from Games Workshop. But I want to go just a little bit further to show you how easy you can sort of knock these contrast jobs up just a little bit. So I've got here some Kindle Flame. We're not going to do a great deal. All I've got is a little old dry brush. And if I get his trousers here and just lightly drag the brush along some of the extreme edges, we can very quickly get some highlights on that contrast stuff. Now you can do, again, as much or as little of this as you like. Pays to be kind of sparing with it, I think. But even over a finished miniature like this, it will help add just a little bit more and make those, those trousers stand out nice. And then we'll do the exact same thing with just a little bit of Necron Compound along the edges of his weapon. 
Now it didn't dawn on me until after I'd actually finished it that this uh, blade he's got here could just as easily be painted up in bone or anything like that. So bear that in mind, <laughs> when you are doing your own, maybe you can add a little bit more variety to your unit by painting that up differently than I have. I don't think it looks too bad as it is, but be aware. And there we have it guys, one finished Pox Walker. I could add a couple of tufts to his base, but I really think at this stage, if you're just churning out infantry to fill your ranks, like you would be for a Death Guard army, this guy is done. <laughs> Anything else from here is entirely up to you guys. So hopefully you did find something interesting there. Uh, in particular, I like being able to mix up the tone of the miniature overall by using that pre-shade. So do experiment with that, guys. I think you'll be quite surprised by some of the results you can get. And it's such an easy thing to do. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, guys, and you enjoy the rest of your day.